to the host Raging Cajuns and the Cal Golden Bears, and that's what we've got today. Both of these teams are unbeaten in the tournament so far. The Cajuns with a 4-0 and record, Cal with a 3-0 and mark, and this is a doubleheader back-to-back between these two teams here this afternoon at Lamson Park. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan McDonald. Glad to have you along here on the Raging Cajun Digital Network as we are just about set for play. The Raging Cajuns so far this year, 4-0, and and they have outscored their four opponents by a score of 51 to nothing. They have 49 hits in those four games, 46 runs batted in, and they're hitting as a team 476. Cal doesn't quite have that gaudy in numbers, but the Bears have still outscored their opponents 20 to 1. They have outhit their opponents 27 to 9 through their first three games. For the Cajuns quickly defensively, Bailey Curry is at first base. Cassidy Shomal is at second base. Alyssa Dalton is the shortstop. Kara Grimion is at third. Keely Milligan is in left field. Raina O'Neill is in center. Sarah Hudeck in right field. Julie Rawls behind the plate. And Summer Ellison making her third appearance in the circle this season. She is 0-0 with a 2.00. ERA and Lindsey Rood leads things off for Cal. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Ellison has given up only two hits through 11 innings this year. She has walked three and struck out 24. Opponents are hitting 0-56 against her this year. And Rood pops up the second pitch. Dalton in foul ground camps under it from the shortstop spot and has it for the first out. Rude came in hitting 700 so far this year. She was 7 for 10 in the first three games of the tournament with two homers, a triple, four runs batted in. But she pops up to start the game, and Amani Bradley, the left fielder, will come to the plate. Bradley, a freshman from Murrieta, California, takes the first pitch from Ellison outside for ball one. Bradley hitting 300 in the tournament so far, three out of ten with a double and two runs batted in. This tournament is the first action for both of these teams this year. 1-0 pitches on the outside corner. Home plate umpire Gary Mitchell says strike one. Mitchell behind the plate. Kevin Davis is at first base. Mike Thibodeau is over at third. Ellison with the 1-1. Left-hand slapper cuts and misses at the drop ball. And Ellison is out front, one ball and two strikes. Ellison last year in her sophomore year, 23-10. and 10. The only 20-game winner in the Sunbelt Conference returning, 1.53 earned run average. The preseason Sunbelt Pitcher of the Year misses low and away with the 1-2. Cal leads the all-time series between these two teams, 5-1. to one, But they haven't played since 1999, so it's been 20 years since these two teams played. Bradley cuts and misses at the 2-2 pitch. She goes down swinging. For the second out of the inning, and for Ellison, who had 16 strikeouts in the opener and then eight strikeouts in a five-inning appearance against Incarnate Word. Swing and a miss by Michaela Coelho, the right fielder. Coelho hitting 273 this year. She's three out of 11 with a homer and a couple of RBIs. 0-1 from Ellison. Fastball right down the heart that time. She's quickly out front. No balls and two strikes. Coelho is a sophomore from Tracy, California. Third leading hitter for the Bears last year. She hit 320 with seven homers. Team high 36 runs batted in. Fouls the 0-2 pitch off. Coelho was second on the team. Actually led the team in slugging percentage last year with a 544 mark. Had 21 extra base hits. 1-2, 1-2, grounder up the middle, handled by Ellison, throw across to Curry in time for the first out. So it's up and down for Cal in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. 
We've played half an inning here at Lamson Park. Our score, Cal nothing. The Cajuns come into bat. Have to be really tall to be a standout pitcher. Last year, she was 16 and 14 with a 2.25 earned run average. 1-1 one, one pitch, skied foul by Milligan. On the left side, she's down in the count, a ball and two strikes. Milligan, the left-handed slapper, senior from Vider, Texas, and transferred from Texas A&M. One-two pitch, that's right down the heart with the fastball. Milligan looked at a call third strike. And she goes down for the first out of the inning. So one up and one gone for Kara Grimion. Grimion hitting 636 through the first four games for Louisiana. Seven of 11 at the plate with two doubles and four runs batted in. And that 636 mark is not even the best on the team. Cajuns are hitting 476 as a team through the first four games. one -oh from Conley. This one's up high and away, and it's two balls and no strikes. Grimion hit 308 last year. She also drew 30 walks, and that was far and away the most of any Cajun. 2-0 pitch. That one misses outside. Oh, nope. Call strike by Gary Mitchell. And it's two balls and one strike. Conley in that game against Fordham threw 111 pitches, 60 of them for strikes. 2-1 pitch, breaking ball stays up high on the change, and it's 3-1. In contrast, Summer Elson threw 99 pitches in her 4-0 win over Fordham, and then only threw 65 in the five-inning win against A&M Corpus Christi. 3-1 from Conley. That is, ah, uh, cuts the plate at the knees. And it's three balls and two strikes. Conley moving it around all over the zone. And right now, so far, she's got a big zone to work with from plate umpire Gary Mitchell. Here comes the 3-2. That one misses outside ball four. Grimmie on the first base runner for either team so far in the game. Her third walk of the year to go with that 7 of 11 hitting performance. Came in right at a 70% on base percentage, and that's even higher now. And now the Cajuns send early in the season their leading hitter to the plate in Raina O'Neill. She is 10 of 14 this year. Three doubles, one homer, five runs batted in. First pitch, grounder foul on the right side. O'Neill set out last year, transferred from Texas A&M. So getting her first playing opportunity in two years this weekend, and she made the most of it. She had a long home run in her Cajun debut on Thursday night against Fordham. The 0-1 from Conley, change up, up high, throw down, goes into center field. Grimion will have to stay at second base but she's there with the stolen base and not a particularly good throw from McKenna Smith, the bear catcher. They called the strike on O'Neill. And Jerry Glasgow is saying the pitch was up around her cap brim and I tend to agree with it. It looked like the ball was way high, and that might have been why Smith had such trouble getting the throw away. Nevertheless, 0-2 to O'Neill. She swings and misses. And so now there are two gone. And that'll bring up Bailey Curry, sophomore first baseman. She's hitting 636 on the year, seven out of 11. One double, one homer. Eight runs batted in so far through four games. Curry, a transfer from Toledo, sophomore. 
She was the freshman of the year in the Mid-American Conference last year. Pitch fastball right on the outside half, and it's call strike one. Conley has not allowed any of the Cajuns to put it in play so far. Two strikeouts and a walk. The 0 1 to Curry, grounder toward the first baseman. Easy pickup for Perez. Steps on the bag for the third out of the inning. So the one out walk does not blossom for Louisiana. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. We've played one full inning. Our score Louisiana nothing and Cal nothing. Bottom of the first inning. And Carly Sparacino, the third baseman, leads things off for Cal here in the second. The sophomore hitting 250 on the year. Two out of eight, a couple of runs scored, and an RBI fouls the first pitch from Summer Ellison off on the left side for strike one. Sparacino hit 203 last year, started 52 of the 54 games she played. 0-1 pitch from Ellison on the outside corner. And it's call strike two. And Sparacino is down, no balls and two strikes. Ellison with the wind. That one's up high and away. And it's a ball and two strikes. Four, five, and six in the order for the Bears here scheduled in the second. That one's chopped foul back into the brick wall behind home plate. Count remains one ball and two strikes. Cal hitting 325 as a team through their first three tournament games. One, two pitch stays down low and is two and two. And the Bear pitching staff has given up only the one run and only nine hits in those three games. Cajuns have yet to allow a run. In fact, they've only given up two hits in four games. 2-2 from Ellison. Little looper toward the third baseman. Grimion has it for the first out. That'll bring up McKenna Smith, the catcher. Team's second leading hitter so far in tournament play, hitting 429. She's three out of seven with a couple of runs, a homer, and two runs batted in. First pitch from Ellison, fastball is in for call strike one. Smith's a freshman from Murrieta, California. Oh, one from Ellison, line to right field. But in her tracks, drifting over a little bit to her left is Hudek. She makes the grab for the second out. Five in a row retired by Summer Ellison at the start, and that'll bring up the designated player, Laura Espelin. Another left-hander, seven of the nine in the Cal lineup. Our left-handed, Esplin hitting 200 on the year, one out of five through the first two games. Her one hit was a double as the first pitch taken for call strike one. And Ellison's been very economical, only through 19 pitches to the first five batters. 0-1 pitch, that's in for call strike two. Ellison struck out 220 in 238 innings last year. 0-2 pitch. Skied foul on the left side over the grandstand area, which is slowly filling, and we anticipate a very good crowd for this afternoon's game and again for tonight's game. Probably already over 1,000 here, and more still to come. It's still... Technically still the work day here in South Louisiana. Pitch is grounded toward the second baseman. Shomal 
flips it over to Curry in time for the third out. So up and down again for the Cal Bears. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We walked one, gave up a stolen base in the first inning. Sarah Hudek hitting 455 this year, five out of 11. She scored eight runs. Has a triple and a homer. Five runs batted in. Sharply hit on the ground ball, but Sparacino right in her tracks, able to flip it across the diamond to Perez for the first out. So one up and one gone for the Cajuns. And that'll bring up Alyssa Dalton. Dalton hitting 455 on the year, most of those coming in her last game when she went three for three with a single, a double, and a home run against Texas San Antonio. First pitch in, four, call strike one. Dalton, the leading hitter on the squad last year. She hit 354, three homers, 32 runs batted in. Since she's already had her first home run of the year, it was a grand slam on Saturday against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. 0-1 pitch, liner on the right side. It's a fair ball. Rounding first, headed for second is Alyssa Dalton. She's got her second double of the year, and the Cajuns with a runner in scoring position with one out. Just tight roped it inside the third base line. Third base umpire Mike Thibodeau had to jump out of the way, but Gary Mitchell behind the plate instantly said fair ball. Cajuns have the first hit of the game, second base runner. <laughs> Diane Neinmeyer out of the California dugout to talk to home plate umpire Gary Mitchell. Neinmeyer in her 31st year as head coach for the Golden Bears, 1,320 wins in her career. First pitch to Hudek is a little humpback liner at the second baseman. Blueford has it, tried to step on the bag to double up Dalton. So now there are two gone, Dalton still at second base. That'll bring up Lexi Como. Como hitting 444 this year, four out of nine. Over the weekend, she had a double, a triple, and two home runs. Leads the team in homers just like she did last year when she had six. First pitch from Conley's down low, gets away from Smith. Dalton moves up to third base. That'll be a wild pitch. First wild pitch of the year for Conley, actually the first for the Bears in four games. And now Dalton is just 60 feet away from the first run of the game but there are two outs. And the 1-0 to Como. Foul back into the screen and the count's even at a ball and the strike. <laughs> Louisiana has scored runs in 11 of their last 12 innings that they have played coming into today. Of course, the competition ramping up a good bit today with the Golden Bears among those receiving votes in the national poll. Cajuns are 15th and 18th in the two national polls as Conley misses this one outside and it's two and one. Very overcast at Lamson Park this afternoon, just like it has been pretty much all weekend, but the wind hasn't kicked up today like it had the first three days. 2-1 pitch, that misses outside. And here comes Dalton. She's going to try to score. The throw is in time to get her out. She tried to get it in, tried to get a hand in, and Jerry Glasgow thinks she did get a hand in, but it's later tonight, and we should be able to not have any issues and get both of these two games in here this afternoon. Alex Perez leads things off for the Bears here in the top of the third inning to face Summer Ellison, who's retired six in a row to start this one. First pitch to Perez, misses low and away. Alexandra Perez, a freshman, hitting 125 this year, one out of eight. She's also drawn a couple of walks. 
1-0 from Ellison. Fastball down the heart that time and evens it up at a ball and a strike. Louisiana 4-0, Cal 3-0 so far in the tournament. Fordham finished with a 3-2 record, finishing third out of the five teams. Two hopper to Dalton at short. Throw across to Curry is in time for the first out. Six of the seven Bears have made contact so far, but only one to the outfield. And Destiny Bluford will come to the plate. Bluford hitting 333. She is three out of nine and has scored four times. She had two home runs already in the tournament. Three runs batted in. Fouls the first pitch back, strike one. Bluford's a junior transfer from New Mexico. First year in the Cal program. 0-1 pitch, breaking ball, breaks right across the heart that time, and Bluford was taking all the way. And it's no balls and two strikes. The 0-2 pitch, grounder up the middle, off the glove of Ellison. Dalton won't be able to throw her out as Ellison slowed it down, changed the path of it. And Bluford is at first with the first hit of the ball game for the Bears. Went right off the glove of Ellison, and Dalton had to stop and go the other way from the shortstop position. So Cal has a runner at first with one out for Kristen McHugh, the center fielder. One for two so far this year. Only played in two of the three first three games. Started one time. Fouls the first pitch off into the screen on the left side for strike one. McHugh's a senior from Roseville, California. Hit 241 last year. Started 23 out of 37 games she played. 0 1 pitch. Sky to the left field, but Milligan is there and makes the catch for the second out. So two gone and back to the top of the order for Lindsey Rood. Came in hitting 700 on the year. She was seven out of 10. Now obviously seven out of 11 grounded or rather popped up to short her first time up. But she's got a triple and a couple of homers already through the first three games. Ground ball back to Ellison. Throws over to Curry for the. We'll head even further south. They'll be heading for the St. Petersburg Clearwater area. They'll take part in the St. Pete Clearwater ESPN Invitational in Florida. And that was a power pack tournament. There will be, they will have four top 25 opponents on their schedule there that weekend. Lexi Como will kick things off for the Cajuns here in the bottom of the third inning. She was at the plate when Dalton was thrown out at the plate. First pitch misses way outside from Conley for ball one. So Como still hitting 444 this year. Four out of nine with four runs scored. A double, a triple, and a homer. Four runs batted in. 1-0 to Como. That one misses way out. And it's two balls and no strikes. Como hit 303 last year. Six home runs. Tied, that led the team, tied with Alyssa Dalton for the RBI lead with 32. 2-0 pitch to Como, grounded foul down the third baseline. Kick save by Cajun coach Jerry Glasgow. And it's two balls and one strike to Como at the DP position today. Caught most of last year. Of this year, she's been moved back and forth between catcher and in the outfield and at the DP spot today for the second time. 2-1 pitch change is sky to right field. Coming on hard is the right fielder, but it's the short to the second baseman, Bluford, who camps under it for the first out. So Como's retired on the pop-up, and the number nine hitter, Cassidy Shomo, will come to the plate. Shomo hitting 286 this year, two out of seven so far this season. 
Shomo hit 207 last year when she was pretty much the everyday starter at second base. First pitch. Misses the outside corner that time just barely for ball one. One oh from Conley that misses away and it's two balls and no strike. Shomo's started three of the four games so far this year. She did not start the last game the Cajuns played. That was Saturday when they rolled past Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That was that 21 to nothing five inning game. 2-0 to Shomo. Foul back into the screen and it's two and one. Two one from Conley. That's a line to right field. Going over is the right fielder, but it's going to get over Coelho's head and sliding into second base with a double is Cassidy Shomo. Shomo with her first double of the year, second hit of the Cajuns. Both of them have been doubles. And just like last inning, they have a runner at second base with one out. That'll bring up. Keely Milligan, who struck out looking her first time up. Milligan squares to bunt, puts it down. Throw to first is in time to get Shomo, second baseman. Blueford going over to cover as Conley handled it. So a sack, one to four on the bunt for the second out. And Shomo moves up to third base. And that'll bring up Kara Grimion, who walked her first time up, so she's still hitting 636 this season. Four RBIs through four games and in a prime RBI spot here. But there are two gone. The first pitch down low, nicely blocked by Smith. And it's a ball and a strike. The 1-0 pitch misses down low and away, and it's 2-0. We mentioned Diane Neinmeyer with her total victories in her career, 1,320. And that means there are two coaches in the stadium today that have over 1,000 wins. Yvette Girard, longtime coach for Louisiana and also at UL, is in attendance today. She won 1,285 in her career. So they've combined for about 2,600 wins. The 3-0 to Grimion. That fastball's right down the heart. Grimion taking all the way, and it's 3-1. Conley with the long look into Smith this time. Here comes the 3-1, and that misses outside ball four. Remyond walks for the second time in the ball game, and the Cajuns have runners at first and third. Good speed at first base in the form of Remyon, who is four for four stolen bases this year and had 17 last year. Chaumont at third, not quite that good a speed. She was five for six last year, stolen bases. Raina O'Neill takes the first pitch, throw down is not in time as Grimion steals second for the second time in the ballgame. So Kara Grimion now six for six this year. She and Milligan tied for the team lead. They're both six out of six. And 0-1 to Raina O'Neill, who struck out her first time up. Fouls that one back into the screen, and she's down no balls and two strikes. 
O'Neill, 10 out of 15 this year as she stands in, and that is a 6.67 batting average. Her strikeout back in the first was her first of the year. But she's down 0-2 here. Change up is line to left field, but this is well foul. And the count remains no balls and two strikes. Louisiana has had runners on base every inning. In fact, they've had a runner in scoring position every inning, and they have them at second and third with two outs here in the third. 0-2 to O'Neill. That one slipped out of the hand of Connolly, rolls up, but Smith's able to block it, and it's one and two. The one two from Connolly, change up is fouled away. And the count remains a ball and two strikes. O'Neill, product of Richmond, Texas. Sophomore, played her first year at Texas Tech two years ago. One two pitch. This one's lined to right field. It is way back. It is way back. Put another dive in the jukebox. Raina O'Neill with her second home run of the year. And the Cajuns lead it three to nothing. O'Neill caught up with a fastball and cleared the scoreboard. Chomo scores from third base. Grimion scores from second base. And Raina O'Neill has RBIs number six, seven, and eight for the season. Just like that, Louisiana strikes for three. Angelica Selden, the pitching coach for the Golden Bears, out to talk to Zoe Conley after that long home run. And that was almost a carbon copy of the one that O'Neill hit on Thursday night against Fordham. That was a two-run shot during Louisiana's four to nothing victory. This one gives Louisiana a three to nothing lead. And that will bring up Bailey Curry. Grounded out to the first baseman her first time up. Curry seven out of 12 so far this year. That's a 583 average. With a double, a homer, and eight runs batted in. First pitch, bounces that one up for ball one. The 1-0 from Conley, grounder on the right side, wicked hop, but the second baseman, Bluford, with a nice play, makes the grab for the third out. But not before Louisiana strikes for three runs, and they do it on two hits. No errors and nobody left on base. Three in the books here at Lamson Park. Our score, Louisiana three, and Cal enough for standing of work. And takes the first pitch. In for call strike one. Took something off the fastball. Bradley struck out her first time up. The only strikeout that Ellison recorded her first time through the order. Swings and misses at that one. Did the left-handed slapper Bradley, and she's down no balls and two strikes. Louisiana with a three-run inning at the bottom of the third on Raina O'Neill's three-run homer. 0-2 pitch, grounder to Grimion, two hops, throws in time to Curry for the first out. Michaela Coelho, the right fielder, grounded to the pitcher, her first time up. Coelho now hitting 250 for the year. Three out of 12 with a homer and two runs batted in. First pitch, grounded to Shomo at second. Quick flip over to Curry. And quickly two up and two gone for Cal here in the fourth. And 
And with two outs, Carly Sparacino comes to the plate. The third baseman popped up to third base. Her first time up, sophomore from Martinez, California. First pitch, swung in and missed at the inside fastball. Sparacino, obviously left-handed. Seven left-handed hitters in the Cal lineup, including the top four. 0-1 pitch, that's up high and tight. In fact, the only right-handers are the catcher, McKenna Smith, and the second baseman, Destiny Bluford. One one from Ellison. Just misses outside with the fastball, and it's two and one. Ellison had struck out 24 batters in her first two appearances, 16 against Fordham and eight against Incarnate Word. 2-1 pitch also misses, and for the only the second time in the ball game, Ellison goes to a three-ball count on a hitter. Three-one pitch. That's low and away ball four. First walk given up by Summer Ellison. It comes with two outs here in the fourth. Fourth walk she's given up this season in now almost 15 innings. And that'll bring up McKenna Smith, the catcher. Fly it out to right field her first time up, and that is the only ball hit out of the infield so far. Check that. One of two balls out of the infield. First pitch from Ellison. That one's down low for ball one. Two gone here in the fourth. First of two games. Second game between these two teams will begin approximately 30 minutes after the conclusion of the first. Ground ball to the shortstop. One hopper to Dalton. Throw across to Curry. Is in time for the third out. So the two out walk. Does no damage. And for Cal in the fourth, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Halfway through with this one at Lampson Park, our score. Cajuns three, Bears nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning, and it will be five, six, and seven for Louisiana to face Zoe Connolly, who was rolling along through the first two innings. He'd given up only one hit, but the Cajuns got a couple of extra base hits in the third, including a three run homer by Raina O'Neill, her second home run of the season. And that's all the run production for either team so far in the game as the Cajuns lead it three to nothing. They've out hit the Bears three to one. Sarah Hudek will lead things off for Louisiana here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hudek grounded out to third her first time up. Hudek now 5 of 12 for the year. That is a 417 average for some of those averages. Jacked up by those last three games when the Cajuns won by big margins. First pitch is lined foul down the left field line. Cajuns defeated Incarnate Word 11 to nothing and then back to back 15 nothing and 21 nothing wins over AM Corpus Christi after they beat Fordham. Four to nothing in the opener. Cal's three games so far. They defeated Fordham nine to nothing, beat Incarnate Word seven to nothing, and yesterday beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi four to one. Change up is across and cuts the plate. Hudek looking at it all the way, and she's down no balls and two strikes.
The 0-2 from Conley. That just misses outside. Interesting story about Hudek. Never played softball until she got to college. She actually began as a baseball player and played collegiate baseball for a year at Bossier Parish Community College. She made 13 appearances on the mound as a pitcher and threw 20 innings. Then transitioned to softball when she went to Texas A&M. This one's lined in the left field, and this one's going to get down for a base hit. Milligan, rather, Bradley is up with it. Gets it back in quickly, but Hudek. Gets the lead-off single, fourth hit of the ball game for Louisiana. And the first time in the game for either team that a team has had the lead-off batter on base. That'll bring up Alyssa Dalton, who doubled her first time up. Moved to third on a wild pitch. Tried to steal home on a throwback, but was thrown out at the plate on a bang-bang play. Miss, misses with the first pitch as Conley for ball one inside. So Dalton now six out of 12 this year with four extra base hits. one from Conley, grounder toward the shortstop. Runner got a good run at it, but throw across the first is not in time as they get the lead out on a quick turn by Rude to Bluford covering second base. So Dalton's at first on the fielder's choice and Hudek is retired for the first out of the inning. And the catcher, Julie Rawls, will stand in. Rawls lined out on a little humpback liner to the second baseman, Bluford, her last time up. Now hitting 375 this year, including a home run. First pitch is on the outside corner on the fastball from Conley, and it's strike one. Cajuns had eight home runs in their first four games. The important thing there for them is seven different players getting those eight homers. 0-1 changeup is sky to the outfield. On the run is McHugh, the center fielder, makes the running grab in the alley in left center field. A nice running catch by McHugh for the second out. And Dalton has to scamper back to first base. That'll bring up Lexi Como, who popped up to the second baseman her first time up. Como, four out of ten this year. But all four of her hits have been extra bases. Misses this one outside. Does Conley for ball one. Conley's thrown 53 pitches through two outs here in the fourth. Her only other outing this year, she threw 111 against Fordham. from the right-hander. Down low in the dirt. Como swings. Throw down is in time to get Dalton attempting to steal. And that is the first time this year that a Cajun runner has been thrown out attempting to steal in 22 attempts. Cajuns were 21 of 21 before that throw out. But for the Cajuns in the fourth, no runs on a hit. No errors. And with the throw out, nobody left on base. Four in Louisiana leading Cal by a score of three to nothing, and Cajuns will have a substitution, a change at first base as Courtney Grimion, younger sister of Kara Grimion, will take over for Bailey Curry at first base. Courtney last year as a freshman was pretty much the everyday first baseman. But she comes on here in the fifth inning. And for the Bears, Lauren Espelin, designated player, will lead things off in the top of the fifth. Espelin grounded out back in the second inning. That ended the second inning. And Summer Ellison prepares for her fifth inning of work. Ellison's only thrown 43 pitches through four innings. This one's lined, though, on the left side. Gets into left field for a base hit. Pass Grimion at third and Dalton at short. So the Bears, for the first time in the ball game, have their leadoff runner reach base here in the fifth. 
second hit for the Bears in the game, and Alex Perez will be at the plate. First baseman grounded out to shortstop her first time up. Perez now one for nine this year. First pitch from Ellison, squares to bunt, pulls back and takes a strike on the outside corner. As both both Grimmions, Kara at third and Courtney at first were both charging on the bunt. Cows had three sacks as this one's drilled on the right side but foul off the fence in foul ground. A loud out, or rather a loud foul ball. But Perez is down, no balls and two strikes. That's about the hardest hit ball that Ellison's given up in three games. 0-2 pitch, right on the inside corner with the breaking ball. Perez didn't believe the call. But Ellison records her second strikeout of the game, and there's one gone here in the fifth. Destiny Bluford has the only other hit for Cal. She singled with one out in the third. She comes to the plate, now four out of 10 this year. Fouls the first pitch back into the screen for strike one. Bluford in her first year with the Bears. Transferred from New Mexico, native of Fairfield, California. Espelin at first base. No stolen base attempts this year. 0-1 pitch, fouled back into the screen again. And it's no balls and two strikes. Esplin only had one stolen base attempt last year, so don't know her speed value there as Bluford swings and misses at the drop ball that time. Third strikeout for Summer Ellison. Two here in this inning after the leadoff hit by Esplin. And they're two gone for the number nine hitter, Kristen McHugh. McHugh flied out to left field pretty deep to Milligan her first time up. First pitch is sky to center field and pretty deep, but O'Neill has a beat on it, comes in and makes the grab for the third out. So the leadoff hit does not blossom for Cal. Como 0 for 1, flied out her first time up, swings at the first pitch, ground ball to Rude at short, over to Perez in time for the first out. So Como is 0 for 2, and Cassidy Shomo will come to the plate. Shomo doubled with one out back in the third and came in to score on Raina O'Neill's three-run homer that cleared the scoreboard in right field. Don't know if that one got onto the tennis courts like her Thursday night shot did, but if it didn't, it was pretty close. And that's a 250-foot shot over a 12-foot fence. First pitch to Shomo is down low for ball one. One out in the bottom of the fifth. Ground ball toward the first baseman, right through the wicket. Perez let it go right through her legs. And Shomo will be at first on the first error of the ball game. Just the third error on Cal through four games. But the Cajuns have a runner at first base with one out. And Keeley Milligan will stand in. Left-handed slap hitter is officially 0 for 1. She struck out in the first, had a sack bunt back in the third. Zoe Conley delivers, and the first pitch fouled toward the Cajun dugout on the left side for strike one. Conley threw four innings. Given up four hits, three runs, all of them earned on that home run. Walked two, struck out two. She had thrown 57 pitches coming into this inning. 
0-1 is up high. And it's a ball and a strike. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. And a 1-1 count to Milligan. Ground ball to the third baseman. Quick throw goes into the right field. Not a good throw by Sparacino. Trying to get Shomo at second base. So Milligan is at first with the fielder's choice. And Shomo is at second base on what will probably be an error on the third baseman. So the Cajuns with runners at first and second and only one out. And Kara Grimion will come to the plate after the meeting at the mound but with the Bears as the infield has all come in to meet with Zoe Conley. Shomo is at second. Milligan is at first. There's one out. And Jerry Glasgow may be going with a pitch runner here. As he is talking to home plate umpire Gary Mitchell. It does look like the Cajuns. Looks like aerial mass, and that's who it is. And mass is going to go in to pitch run for Shomo at second base. Mass making her fourth appearance of the year. Was pretty much a regular in the outfield last year when she was 10 of 13 on stolen bases. First pitch in to Grimion. Kara Grimion is in for call strike one. Grimion does not have an at-bat officially in the game. Walked in the first, walked in the third, and came around to score. She's got a couple of stolen bases also. one pitch, misses away with the breaking ball, and it's one and one. Conley had not allowed a run in her first appearance, three hits against Fordham, and she walked four and struck out ten. But the Cajuns took advantage of the three-run homer. This one is lined on the right side. It's a fair ball. Hits the line. Ne- O'Neal, rather, mass will score. Second run's going to come around. It'll score. Kara Grimion into third with a three run, with two run triple, and it's five to nothing. For Grimion, her first triple of the year, her third extra base hit. RBI's number five and six. Hit it right on the line down the right field line. The pinch runner Mass scored from second, and the speedy Keeley Milligan scored all the way from first base. And it's a five to nothing game. And still a runner at third base with run out for Raina O'Neill. And last time she was up, she sent a pitch over the scoreboard. A three run homer. Pitch is up high and tight for ball one. O'Neill one for two in the game, struck out in the first. And now Cal will make a substitution at first base in the middle of the inning as Perez has already come to the dugout. And Diane Neinmeyer is talking to home plate umpire Gary Mitchell. We got a double switch. Actually, we do. McKenna Smith, who was the starting catcher, has now gone out. She's going to play first base. And the Bears have a new catcher in the game. And 
that is Lauren Espelin, who was the designated player. And now she's going to take over at the catcher spot. So no change in the batting order for the Bears, just some changes in positions as McKenna Smith moves from catcher to first base. And Lauren Espelin moves from the designated player to the catcher spot. Those are the only changes for the Cal Bears. And so as O'Neill stands in, draws back to bunt, takes the bouncer up there. Nicely blocked by the brand new catcher in the game, uh, Espelin. Having some problems with the scoreboard. It's a 2-0 and count now to O'Neill. So we'll try to keep you posted as well as we can there. The 2-0 pitch from Conley to O'Neill. Grounder on the right side, but foul. Grimion retreats back to first, and it's a 2-1 and one count. One gone here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two runs already in this inning for Louisiana on a two-run triple by Kara Grimion, who is at third base. And the 2-1 to O'Neill. That one's low and away. And it's three balls and a strike. Courtney Grimial waits on deck. She came on as a defensive replacement in the top of this inning at first base. 3-0 pitch. That is lined into center field. Coming over is the center fielder. McHugh makes the catch, but Grimion scores easily from third base. Sack fly for Raina O'Neill. Give her her fourth RBI of the ball game, and it's a 6 to nothing game. So the bases are empty for Courtney Grimion, making her first plate appearance of the day. She's one for six so far this year. Has seen action in three games, started two at first base. She has three runs batted in. First pitch fouled away for strike one. Two gone here in the fifth. Conley with the wind. That one's down low. And now Conley backs up, getting the signs, and time is taken. Cal with no runs, two hits, two errors in the game. Louisiana, six runs, five hits, and no errors. And the 1-1 one, one to Grimion, that one's inside, and it's two balls and a strike. Well, make that three and one. That's what Gary Mitchell just held up. Conley with the 3-1. That one's down low and away, ball four. So Courtney Grimion draws the free pass, the third given up by Zoe Conley in the game. And with two outs, Sarah Hudek comes back to the plate. And yes, if you're a longtime Major League Baseball fan, that name might be familiar to, to you. Her dad, John, was a former Major League pitcher. Pitched a long time for the Houston Astros. 
Hudick one for two, single the first time up. Little check swing. Conley has it. Quick throw across to Perez is in time for the third out. But not before the Cajuns do more damage. They score three times. And they do it on just one hit. There were two errors and one left on base. We've played five here at Lamson Park. Our score, Louisiana six, California nothing. The important traits that comes from this university here are folks that are go-getters, folks that are action. For the season with six runs score, takes the first pitch breaking ball on the inside corner, strike one. Summer Elson on for her sixth inning of work. She threw only 51 pitches through the first five. Misses this one, and it's a ball and a strike. Ellison's given up two hits, walked one, struck out three. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one's inside, and it's two balls and a strike. Some of the Lamson Park faithful thought that was in, but it looked well inside from our viewpoint, so it's two balls and a strike. Two one is lined into center field. Going back to O'Neill, it's going to get over her head, and one hops off the wall. Root is going to be in at second base with a double. For the second straight inning, the Bears get their lead runner on base. Root has her first hit of the game, her eighth hit of the tournament. And she's at second base, and Amani Bradley will stand in. Left-handed slapper is 0 for two. Struck out in the first, grounded out in the fourth. Third hit of the ball game for the Bears. This one's chopped foul on the first pitch to the right side. Rude led the Bears in hitting last year, 337. She had 26 extra base hits, 16 doubles. That's her first double of the year. She had a triple and two homers earlier in the tournament. This one's grounded up the middle. This will get into center field, and that will score a run as Rude scores easily from second base. And the Bears break on the scoreboard. It's 6-1 to one for Amani Bradley, her third RBI of the season and of the tournament. And that is the first run that Louisiana has given up this year in five games. So the Cajuns went 27 innings before giving up a run this year. First pitch to Michaela Coelho is fouled away down the left field line for strike one. Coelho 0 for 2. Two ground ball outs in the first and the fourth. The Bears this time, this is their third time through the order against Summer Ellison. Looks like they're getting a little bit better swings this time. First pitch, that's hops up and gets away from the catcher Rawls and headed for second is Bradley on the wild pitch. So the Bears with something going here in the sixth. One run already in, nobody out, and a runner at second base. And a one and one count to Coelho. One one from Ellison, down low and away. And it's two and one. You knew that the Cajuns were going to give up a run eventually. You figured it would probably come today against a team as good as the Bears. But they did score 57 before giving up their first run of the year. And Jerry Glasgow wants to go out and have a Quick talk with Summer Ellison and the rest of his infield as they join him in the circle. And Coelho also heads down the line to talk to Diane Neidmeyer. Jerry Glasgow, a sore ankle and all, heads back to the Cajun dugout. Coelho stands back in. Two and one is the count. With nobody out here in the sixth. One run already in for Cal. This one's lined to left field. This is down for a base hit. 
One hopper to the left fielder Milligan as she quickly brings it back in. So the Bears will have them at the corners and still nobody out. Three straight hits for Cal here in the sixth. And that'll bring up Carly Sparacino, who is officially 0 for 1, popped up in the second and walked in the fourth. Cleanup hitter for the Bears. Two out of nine so far this year. Does have a run batted in. Bradley is at third. Coelho is at first. First pitch on the outside corner with the fastball, strike one. Elson only allowed two hits through the first five innings. And struck out three. Didn't walk anybody. Still has not walked anybody. 1-0 pitch. Went after it with the bunt. And Sparacino tried to pull back but couldn't. And the snowballs and two strikes. Not a bad idea with Grimion having to play back with the runner at third base. O2 to Sparacino, tried to chop one, couldn't come up with it. She goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. Fourth strikeout for Ellison. Runner still at first and third, but now there's one out. And McKenna Smith, now playing first base, started the game as the catcher. Will come to the plate. She is 0 for 2, flied out in the second, and grounded out in the fourth. First pitch from Ellison. That one's in for call strike one with the drop ball. Cal now with five hits. In fact, hits are even between these two teams, 5-5. That one's a liner spared by Shomo. It's going to be a double play. Cassidy Shomo spears the line drive. And quickly throws to first to double up Coelho. Now that ball was hit like a rope. But Smith got robbed on the line drive grab by Shomo for the second out. And had the easy flip double play to first base. So for the Bears in the sixth, one run on three hits. No errors. And with the double up, nobody left on base. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Dalton, one for two so far today, hitting 462 for the season. Two doubles, one triple, one homer. She's got nine runs batted in. That's the top mark for any of the Cajuns. Zoe Conley on for her sixth inning of work. Misses way outside for ball one. She's thrown 75 pitches through the first five innings. Giving up five hits, six runs. All three of the runs scored in the fifth were all unearned after a couple of errors. So her defensive mates let her down a little bit in the fifth. Two walks, two strikeouts. Check that, three walks and two strikeouts for Conley. Two out to Dalton, slowly hit ground ball to second base. Blueford is up with it over to Perez in time for the first out. So Dalton is retired, leading off the sixth. And that will bring Julie Rawls to the plate. The catcher is 0 for 2, lined out in the second, flied out in the fourth. Transfer from Northwestern State, where she played for two years, now hitting 333 on the year, three out of nine. She came in three out of seven as the first pitch is low and away in the dirt. One gone, the bottom of the sixth. 1-0 pitch. That is down low, and it's two balls and no strikes. Two-o pitch, grounder to the shortstop. 
Brood can't pick it up at first, still gets the throw across in time for the second out. Bang, bang play at first, but I think the throw was there ahead of Rawls. So there's two gone here in the bottom of the six, and Lexi Como will come to the plate. Como popped up and grounded out 0 for 2 so far today. First pitch to Como, misses outside, four, ball one. One no pitch, that one catches the outside corner. Nice pitch from Conley, and it's a ball and a strike. One pitch misses outside and is two and one. Como now four of 11 this year, hitting 364. Lines this one to right center field and pretty deep. Going back with the outfielder, still going back. Put another dime in the jukebox. Lexi Como with her third home run of the year. And it's a seven to one game. Second home run of the day for the Cajuns. RBI number five on the year for Lexi Como and all five of her hits this year have been for extra bases. She's got a double, a triple, and just launched her third home run. And that is going to be it for Zoe Conley. She's going to leave after five and two-thirds innings. And Alexandra Perez is already in the game as the DP. She will take over duties in the circle. Perez is 1-0 in the tournament. She threw a seven-inning three-hitter. That came against Incarnate Word. And she struck out four. Opponents hitting only 125 against her so far this year. Perez is a freshman. Temecula, California, left-handed pitcher. Zoe Conley goes five and two-thirds innings. She gives up six hits, seven runs, four of them earned. She walked three, struck out two, threw 85 pitches, 46 of them for strikes. And the last pitch she delivered, Lexi Como sent it over the right center field fence for her third home run of the year. So the left-hander Perez will take over. With one, two outs in the bottom of the sixth. And Cassidy Shomo will be at the plate. Shomo officially one for one, doubled and scored in the third, reached on an error and came around to score in the fifth and the first pitch Wild inside for ball one from Perez. Perez was the uh, complete game winner in the game against Incarnate Word yesterday. Gave up only three singles. She did hit a batter. Did not walk anybody. This pitch misses low and away, and it's two balls and no strikes. 
And in contrast to the five foot tall Connolly, Perez stands 6 1. Two-o pitch. That one misses outside, and it's three balls and no strikes. In fact, Perez is the tallest of the Bears. Infielder, outfielder Cameron Condo, five foot eleven, and then the Bears have nobody else over five foot eight. Three-o pitch, breaking ball. That's in for call strike one as Perez found the zone with the curveball. And it's three and one to Shomo, hitting in the number nine spot. Continues to get more overcast as the evening goes along, just about 5.30 in the central time zone. Three-one pitch, skied right behind the plate. Going back is that gonna be off the fence though, would not have been an out even if Espelin had caught it. Espelin came in as the catcher when McKenna Smith moved to first base. So count goes to three and two on Shomo. The Bears will need six runs in the top of the seventh to keep this one going. Three-two pitch, right back up the middle, and Perez with a nice defensive play. Spears that one before it can get Espelin. Will lead things off for Cal here in the top of the seventh inning. Espelin has one of those five hits. She's one for two. Grounded out in the second, singled in the fifth. Ellison with the wind, first pitch in tight for ball one. A reminder, this is the first of two games between these two teams. Second game will begin approximately 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one, and it will also air right here on the Raging Cajun Digital Network. 1-0, grounder up the middle, Shomo to her right, gloves it, throws across to Grimion for the first out. Shomo had a gem of a defensive play to end the sixth inning. When she a line drive that looked like it was headed for the alley in right center field and turned that line drive into a double play. So one gone in the seventh, and Alex Perez now pitching for the Bears. Will stand in, takes the first pitch from Ellison up high for ball one. Perez is 0 for 2, grounded out to lead off the third and struck out in the fifth. 1-0 from Ellison, breaking ball stays inside and it's two balls and no strikes. Perez hitting number seven in the Cal order. Now one for 10 this year, and this one's in for call strike two. Two on from Ellison, swung in and missed. Perez was behind on the fastball, and now the count's even at two and two. Two-two pitch from Ellison, swung in and missed. Perez went after the drop ball on the outside half of the plate. She's a strikeout victim for the second time in the ball game, and that's number five for Ellison. Bears had only struck out six times through their first three games. But now Destiny Bluford is the last hope. The second baseman is one for two. And Ellison's first pitch is in for call strike one. Bluford singled in the third and struck out in the fifth. pitch from Ellison's up high, and it's one and one. As Louisiana is one out away from improving to five and oh, and Ellison one out away from going to three and oh. 
1-1 pitch. Skied in the infield. This should do it. Grimion at third base camps under it. Makes the catch for the third out of the inning. Three up and three down in the top of the seventh for the Cal Bears. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And Louisiana takes the first game of this doubleheader by a score of 7-1. to one. With the win, Louisiana improves to 5-0 oh on the year. Cal falls to.